Welcome everybody to the Electric Supercar Channel. Today we're actually gonna be doing some things on our Porsche. For those of you who are new, this is a 1977 Porsche 911 Targa. For this build, we've got a lot of progress we wanna show you. A lot of this includes the battery boxes, as well as some modifications to get these all in place. If we did a lot of work, let's show you what we did. Okay, we've got Russ and Tony. Where's Tony? There's Tony. We got Russ and Tony today. We are working on wiring for the Porsche. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing. So right now we have routed out our lengths for our Porsche body harness. Uh, we have measured predetermined lengths of our taillights, headlights, and body consumers. We measured that on the car and we've kind of just routed it out here. Um, all of these wires, they are important. They are different uh, size gauges. So we have smaller gauges for smaller consumers and bigger gauges for bigger consumers. So right over here, we have our headlights stuff right here. I believe this is seven feet away from our PDM. So if you measured all this length right out here, that would be seven feet to the PDM. We are using a hardwire PDM and that will do all the controlling. All right, it looks like we've got our uh, consumers there. I think we're going to use some Deutsch Motorsport style connectors. They're pretty easy to use and they're nice and waterproof. Everything that's outside of the car, we'll do some of that shielding sheath stuff and then shrink tube the ends and then we'll, on the inside, I think we're just going to do some interior Tessa tape. Let's uh, check inside the garage and see where they got their measurements. All right, so tell me where you started, where you took your measurements from. So we plan on having our PDM somewhere around in this area. We're going to make a mounting bracket for that. And then we're planning on going down through the main tunnel, down through here, through the, the main center console tunnel, down through here and out through here to the, towards the back. We're gonna have it split off here and that'll come all the way back down to our taillights there. We got one there. And then for our front harness, we'll have one leg, one branch coming all the way down here. You have your right front headlight and you have your, your left headlight. So this, so this is just low voltage. This is the body lighting stuff. The other things like the interior lights and how we turn things on, that'll be separate, but this will be kind of its own standalone harness set. So routing the body harness and putting it on the vehicle. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, looks good. It's nice being able to use the uh, factory wire mounts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now we got it all laid out. It's all on the vehicle. So we got this PDU hooked up. We're doing some uh, initial testing, kind of getting things powered up. We have some key switch is turned on and it sends power over here. We're gonna show a couple things, how to turn on some of our consumers, like our headlight and our blinkers. Fresh face Tony over here has the software fired up. 25 outputs. Right now we only have two of them allocated. So one of the cool things about, uh, especially this hardwire PDU, what this allows us to do is we can set it low and it will trip a fault. Send it to the device. Okay, config sent. Key off, back on. And there's our high beam. Go ahead and turn that off. For today's sponsor, we have the GKU D600. This is a dash cam. Looks really good. Power cable. This is your rear dash cam and some of the accessories. So let's go get to it and install it. Basically just open up the app, connect to the Wi-Fi, and then you are good to go. So you can switch between the front and rear cameras. So that's all looking great. Again, you can record or take a picture, go through some of the camera settings here. So you can record sound, speaker volume, video resolution, loop recording, 24 hour clock, update collision sensing, rear flip. So that's awesome in case you have installed upside down, which I've done from time to time. Yeah, these are all the settings that you would ever want. So let's go ahead and install this. Meet the GKU4 K plus 1080p, dual dash cam, your front and rear protection on every drive. It records the front at ultra clear 4K and the rear at crisp 1080p, so every detail from license plates to road signs is captured perfectly. With a wide 170 degree angle lens, you'll see more of the road and reduce blind spots for safer driving. Even at night, advanced sensors and WDR technology keep the footage bright and detailed so you can clearly see what's around you. It also has built-in 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so you can quickly view and download your videos straight to your phone using the app, no computer needed. And with 24 hour parking mode, your car stays protected even when you're not around. Loop recording means it never runs out of space, it automatically replaces old footage. Plus, the G-Sensor locks clips instantly if it detects a collision. Setup is super easy, mount the cameras, plug in the power, connect to the app, and you're good to go. One system, two cameras, full protection. If you haven't upgraded your car's safety yet, now's the time to get the GKU dual dash cam and drive with confidence. 
I'm gonna show you the batteries we got and I'll tell you a little bit about them. So all of our customers are truly amazing. The Porsche owner is probably more involved than most. He is local to us. He was pretty intent on getting a great deal on batteries and so let me show you what we got. All right, what we have here are some battery modules from a Jeep Cherokee and they've got, uh, looks like, I'll call this cooling, but uh, metal plate kind of all sides around here, and even a little bit on the back, just not the top. So you can see these plates kind of wrap around. So these are from a Jeep Grand Cherokee plug-in electric hybrid. These are 2.1 kilowatt hour modules. Nominal voltage is about 44 volts. It is a 1P12S configuration. Online it says they do have an 8C rating. That should be plenty for us to drive the Tesla motor. Some of you have probably already done the math and we need about eight of these modules to get us up to the 400 volts. And that is kind of the voltage architecture that we need to run the Tesla motor. With that said, eight of these would only get you about 16 kilowatt hours of energy. That'd probably get you like 50 to 75 miles of range. We wanted a little bit more for this. So we are doing two packs. So the packs will be split up, one in the front and one in the rear. The customer is key on getting a really good weight distribution versus stock. We'll have more of the weight in the front than original, but we are putting some in the back. So this car, we're hoping we'll have pretty close to a 50-50 weight distribution. Parallel packs is not ideal, but we do what the customer wants. A couple things that are nice, it already has cell taps, but in order to use it, we have to swap out these boards. So I did get um, some boards that we can replace to work with uh, just any BMS system. So we just take out these screws, put them into here, and we've even got some connectors. Right, so it looks like it's got cell taps for everything, a uh, complete module negative most and a complete module positive most, and then you've got thermistors one and two. So each one of these modules, I think when fully charged is around 50 volts. So again, we're still not dealing with high voltage. Nevertheless, we always wanna be careful. Go. All right, I just checked all the cells and basically we're 3.902, 3.910 was the highest. So again, pretty close distribution. How much do you think it weighs? I'm gonna go with like 28 pounds. 26 and five ounces. So almost 12 kilograms. Okay, I've done 15 of these. This is my last one. I'll do this one real time. I'll probably put it side by side with the others, just going uh, high speed, but you can kind of watch uh, how quickly we can do this. Um, I say quickly, it probably still gonna take 10 minutes, but we'll time it. We are all done right at eight minutes. We are on our way to building battery boxes. This one is for the Porsche and it will go in the front. So we've got uh, spots for plugs and switches and other things, connectors. What we'll do is do a dry fit for everything. We'll kind of put thermal pads in, the batteries in, connectors in, the bus bars. If everything looks good, I think uh, we can just button it up. We also have this, these are the thermal pads. So again, we're gonna put these anywhere where the metal batteries are touching. So they'll be further isolated or insulated from the battery box. Because so isolation is a big deal and these are what really help. We've got uh, this box coming together. So this will be the plug that goes out to the motor. Got some of these big cables that are actually gonna connect the front battery pack to the rear battery packs. These are gonna be like for all the accessories like DC to DC, AC, uh, charging, things like that. We also have our disconnect, our manual disconnect switch here. We've also got bus bars for everything. We'll continue to put things together and get the battery modules in. We're getting some of the battery modules in and just testing out uh, bus bar fits and things like that. So things are looking pretty good so far. So we got a plug with a bus bar that goes here. So that one kind of sits right there. Again, this one's kind of from that one, from there to there, there to there, there to there. So all these are looking pretty good. These are all just pure copper. And that one's going from there to there. So these are all looking pretty good. Um, I wanted to just do a quick test fit, make sure we're not missing any pieces, make sure that uh, if anything needs to be modified that we get on that.
All right, so we're working on the Porsche. We're test fitting the front battery box. So we have most of the battery box here. We had to take part of it off just to get it to slide into place. We're gonna have to uh, mount the end there once we get it in. I feel like the jack just gets in the way too. Okay, careful. Now it's gotta slide. It's almost gotta go forward. Oh, we gotta go forward. We still got an issue here. Okay, so yeah, it's definitely yeah. touching there. Yeah, but it shouldn't stop but going it back. Yeah. No, it's going back. Well, and we need to measure this right here, the distance from this. This is what? Eight and three quarter. So what's the distance between here and here? So that will tech that'll fit. So we have two options. We cut out notch, which sucks, or we cut out notch this, which also sucks. So it's kind of like pick your poison. I think that would be better. I think so too. For those of you who are purists, you're gonna have to look away. To do things the way the customer wants, we actually have to do a couple little modifications. This is mainly to route all the cables where we need them to go, but also to secure the battery boxes. So this is our issue right here. And then uh, this whole battery should slide back, give us enough room. So we got some more parts from Oshka. This part is the battery support in the front here. So mm -hmm. we 3D printed this out first. That's gonna get welded in place around here. I need to adjust some of these tabs. You can't do, you know, like 3D contours with just a sheet metal bend. So. I'm gonna kind of massage out these pieces to fit those contours. So I'm gonna hit this with, with a hammer quite a few times. Keep checking it until it's good enough. Okay, we're close. I think I just need to bring out this tab right here. I think that is close enough. Enough to be getting on with at least. Really solid right now. So I had to get this contour a little bit better, but I'm touching all along here, pretty close here. I can get tacked there and then push that out. I'll tack it there and then push these out. Touching all the way around there, touching all the way around here, there, pretty much all of that. So it's just a little bit to be done over here and uh, we'll be good to go. We're gonna get all this cleaned up, the native surface, so we can get a clean weld. This one follows all the contours of the body, get welded to it, and then this one Obviously, it will get welded to that and then get welded to the body out here. I'm going to go ahead and paint some of the areas that uh, we're not going to be able to get to once we weld all of this in. Uh, I don't know how much of like sandblasting I'll be able to get into these areas. So to pr protect it from rust, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint it all with uh, some steel it so that I can still weld on it. Uh, and then I can weld the whole battery pan in here and we won't have to worry about it rusting through. After a lot of effort, got the battery support in place and the battery on top of it. I believe everything is good now where I want it. And then I will go underneath and tack the bottom piece in place to the body. And then I'll take the battery box back out and weld up here. So this is where we're at though. Uh, I'm happy with the fit. Uh, and we were able to obviously install the, the battery box as well. So yeah, it's working out so far. It's just gonna be a process to uh, do more welding and it's it's a lot of work but uh it'll be worth it this is a really good platform for the battery and it will provide a lot of strength to the not only the car but the battery itself and uh, tie everything in together so uh, it's a lot of work but i'm really happy with it
Okay guys, we got our battery box in a place that we think is best. We also need to figure out our cables and how they're routed through the vehicle. So John and I have come up with a solution. We're gonna use the uh, standard tunnel here. Now they usually had, or they originally had, I should say, some heater hoses going through, some wiring and some other odds and ends. But what we're gonna use it for is this big hole here, we're gonna route our uh, big electrical cables for the motor and the battery. So right now we're working on getting the cables routed through and up to the front battery pack and uh, we'll see how it goes. We did a preliminary run through with the high voltage cables. I think we're, our length is good, but we're running into a lot of like, there's little tubes and stuff, stuff that we don't need anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of all these little tubes that are running through the, the middle there so that we actually have a, a passage for the high voltage cable. Getting ready to drill through uh, a high voltage cable pass through. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna end up going through here, and then I need to drill a three inch hole through here so that we can go from the battery through the grommets, drop down into here, and then we'll take the tunnel all the way back, go through here, and that'll take us to the rear battery box and the rear, well, obviously the motor. I'm gonna drill it from in here. Luckily, this just fits in here. So you can see we did a ton of stuff. Got a lot of things that much closer. I'm excited to show you all the more steps we do. So please subscribe, follow all our builds. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. So that should be plenty for us to drive the Tesla. That should be plenty for us to drive the Tesla.